Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. This is Erica Floriani, Membership Manager at Southwestern Vermont Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank you to our, our thank you for joining us for our Lunch and Learn series. This is part two of Money Talks, Small Business Investing and Retirement Planning. We want to thank Heritage Family Credit Union once again for being our sponsors for the 2021 Lunch and Learn programs. We also want to thank Cat TV for getting us live over Facebook. And we have today Michael McKenna from DB McKenna and Company. He is gonna walk us through some interesting facts and things you should do and steps you should make now to uh, secure your future. So with that, Michael, I wanna thank you for joining us and the floor is yours. Absolutely, thank you, Erica, I appreciate that. and. And thank you for putting this together and, and running it on a regular basis. That's that's absolutely terrific. And I think it's a nice service to our membership. Uh, obviously, thank you to Matt Harrington for his leadership and uh, certainly CAT TV for your support and heritage as well. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Mike Cutler now on a couple of things lately at CAT TV. So we're very fortunate to have the community that we do. And again, thank you, Erica. I thought what I would do first is maybe just give a little bit of an introduction as to what I'm all about and uh, kind of lead into uh, the program. Um, for those of you that don't know me, um, I was raised in North Bennington, came up here in 1970 with my family. And my dad was actually uh, transferred from New Britain, Connecticut to Stanley Works in Shaftesbury. And that's how I, I landed here. And um, I'm a 1983 graduate of uh, Mount Anthony and uh, left uh, high school with no intentions of ever coming back. Um, went to Bryant University and uh, Providence, Rhode Island and wound up coming back here in 1994 with my wife to work with the family business. So I am an independent financial advisor. My dad uh, who transferred to Vermont with Stanley started this business in 1982 and um, he's a spry 78 and he still works uh, every single day. And uh, I'm one of four boys and my brother, Brian, who's the youngest of the four boys, I'm the oldest, um, joined us in about 10, almost 15 years ago now. So it's truly a family business with a couple of support people who uh, are not family. But anyway, so it's been a great career. I love it here. Um, my wife likes it here. And uh, it's a great place to raise a family. I've got two boys, uh, a sophomore and a senior in high school. So needless to say, uh, we, our grocery bill is pretty steep. <laughs> we sleep well every night. So it's been terrific. Um, so I work with DB McKenna and Company, um, which is an independent uh, broker dealer. And we also have a company, uh, Bennington Financial Planning Group. Uh, which is a fee-based type of asset management company and financial planning investment advisors. Um, so that's what we have here. My involvement in the community, I've been with uh, the Chamber of Commerce now for over 20 years uh, as a board member. And it's been really terrific, um, especially the last several years. It's been so informative under the leadership of Matt and um, it's, we're going in the right direction. It's been absolutely terrific. I'm very involved with the hospital uh, on a volunteer basis. I've, I've worked, served my church on their finance committee and uh, Dollars for Scholars, Hospice of Bennington County. And it's been really terrific to give back to the community. But what I thought we would do today is uh, talk a little bit about uh, what to do as your business is starting to come out of COVID or maybe you're already there and you're starting to see some, excuse me, some success with uh, your operations and you do have some discretionary um, revenues or income that you would like to consider investing. There's a couple ways to go. Now bear with me, I'm gonna start sharing my screen here. And what I'd like to do is show you some ideas. I've broken it down into two different um, categories. So if you allow me to do this here, we went through the introduction. So I started with how to invest. So if you happen to have some uh, discretionary savings that you do not need to commit to the business, 
and it's sitting idle and maybe in your checking account, your operations account, and you're looking for different things to do with that to maybe make it work harder, I thought I'd spend this first section just describing some of your options that might make sense. So obviously having it in the bank right now, uh, if it's in your operations account, chances are you're not making any money. But you do have some options within the bank that might work for your particular needs. Um, to start, you could consider something uh, such as a money market account. Now, if you haven't had any experience with a money market account, uh, essentially it works like a checking account that pays interest. So you have the ability to put money into this money market account. You're able to transfer the monies back to your operations account at any point. And uh, however, it's gonna come with some strings attached. You might be limited to only making withdrawals or transfers out of your money market account to another account six times a month, okay? But if you're in a jam and you needed uh, to access the bulk of it or all of it, you could clearly move that money on out to your regular operations account and access the monies there, okay? Um, and because of your troubles, you know, because of the lack of liquidity, even though six times a month, and actually as it stands right now, it's nine times because of COVID, but I fully anticipate as COVID starts to wane that will drop back down to six times. Um, for your troubles, you'll get some interest on your monies in that account, okay? So the key point to remember about a money market account for the business is that it is liquid and you will earn some interest. And again, another COVID comment, uh, last March, right this week, last March, as a matter of fact, the stock market hit its, its lowest and then the government, including the Federal Reserve, really committed to trying to get us out of, of a potential recession. And we did have a very short recession. But one of the things the Federal Reserve did do was lower interest rates tremendously to make it cheaper for everybody to borrow money. But what that means to us as individuals and as businesses, our interest bearing checking accounts pay very little. So you will get some interest on your money market account today, but not a whole lot, but it is very safe. Uh, your bank most likely or is FDIC insured, you know, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And should your bank uh, fail the federal government will come in and make you whole. So that's the beauty about having a bank investment, very, very low risk, very low reward, but very low risk. So if that is your comfort level, that might be something to consider. Another alternative would be to um, look at a certificate of deposit. You could buy those for the business, just like you may have already purchased for yourself. Um, you're tying your money up for a period of time or a term, but for your sacrifice of tying that money up, you may get a higher yield. I would tell you if you wanna consider that, uh, don't be sucked into going out too far in your time commitment. Uh, obviously, if you go to a year, two years, all the way up to five years, the yield gets higher and higher as it goes out. And the reason why I suggest that you think carefully about tying up your money is that rates are so low there's really only one way for the money to go, or the rates to go, excuse me, and that will be up. So typically in a very low interest rate environment, if you consider CDs, you wanna consider shorter term. So that way you're not breaking the CD to buy another higher yielding CD, maybe tomorrow, next week, or next month. But one more thing about CDs, don't forget you are tying them up. So it's not as liquid as a money market account. Um, you will. If you needed the money, you could break the CD to access your funds, but that would most likely be subject to a penalty, okay? Not just forego the interest you would have earned, but a, possibly a penalty as well. If that's still something you wanna consider, what I would recommend is certainly uh, spend the time uh, to talk to your, your, um, your banker to make sure you understand how the terms work. Okay, so we covered all of that. Another item we can take a look at um, as an alternative are insurance products, okay? And that's right here. I, I have listed insurance alternatives. And you could consider um, a, a variable annuity or a fixed annuity. Um, that's something to consider. However, I personally don't do those and they tend to come with a lot of restrictions, but for a lot of people, that's what works for them. And if you have uh, somebody that handles your insurance, you might want to consider asking them about that. 
I do handle, however, a lot of different investment alternatives, alternatives excuse me. And this is where I see most of my clients going uh, with regards to their discretionary savings. So you could do things as uh, simple as individual stocks or equities. You could do individual bonds, all right? And the beauty about both of these is you retain control over your investment decisions. You make the decision today to buy IBM, for example, or tomorrow to sell IBM, all right? Um, it's a very liquid market. You know, every day the stock market is open, you are able to invest and you're able to exit or liquidate, okay? So as long as the stock market's open, you're guaranteed to have a market. The risk you take is that, you know, if you bought the IBM and today you have a need to buy a new truck for the business or something along those lines, IBM may or may not be where you would like it to be when you liquidate. So you may make money on it, or if uh, they happen to hit a rough patch uh, and you want to sell your IBM, you might take a little bit of a loss, but that's one of the items that are available to you as a business owner. However, I think the thing I see the most is the final item here called mutual funds. And mutual funds are kind of nice in the sense that um, it's a little bit more passive investing. You don't have to decide, is today, today the day to buy IBM or sell General Electric or what have you, because you're paying somebody else at the mutual fund or the investment company to, de to do that for you. So our decision-making uh, participation, I guess, as investors is we would decide as investors what, what particular fund we would like to invest in. And, we, and there's something for everybody. Uh, you can be super aggressive, super conservative, uh, or something in between. And typically when I see uh, companies investing their discretionary savings, corporations, more times than not, what I see are business owners looking to try to earn something more than what they would get at the bank. And also recognizing that they're assuming a certain amount of risk by using something other than banking investments, banking tools like CDs or money markets. So what I typically see is when business owners do this, they tend to go with a more moderate type of investment. And a lot of times what I see is uh, business owners utilizing a balanced mutual fund. And anytime you hear the word balanced, uh, whether it's from Fidelity, Vanguard, T. Rowe Price, American Funds, Putnam, typically when you see the word balanced, you can comfortably know that um, it's gonna be a blend of good quality stocks and good quality bonds. So the stocks offer us the ability to earn a little bit more because we're assuming a little bit more risk. And then the bonds give us some stability in our investments. It doesn't mean that this investment won't go down. It just means that if the stock market should go down, it will go down, your investment will go down much less than the overall stock market because it's designed to be a little bit more conservative. Um, some funds even, have a goal of preserving the principal, okay? And that means simply, obviously nobody wants to lose money, but uh, the number, every fund has goals so that when you invest, you know what you're getting for professional money management. But some funds actually have a balanced fund that has principal preservation as the number one goal. So yeah, they recognize you've given them the trust to invest your money in a particular fund, but they're being super careful with it doesn't guarantee it won't go down, but what that means is that they're going to focus on real good quality blue chip names all across the board between stocks and bonds. If they can grow the income in the different tools to give you more interest in income from the portfolio, they'll do that. And then sometimes, you know, the third option or the third goal will be to um, increase capital appreciation. So that's if they can get that great, but the number one goal is principal preservation. So you have all sorts of tools that are out there uh, when considering investments for your business. Now, more times than not, what I see companies doing is when they have enough success within the business, they're looking to try to uh, attract and retain employees to continue to grow the business. And one very convenient way to do that is through a retirement plan. And what I'd like to do now is just spend a few minutes uh, talking about 
uh, retirement plans that might work for your business. And there's a whole bunch of different plans that are out there. They all come with different numbers and different acronyms. And these are all IRS kind of designed uh, plans, um, oftentimes with the Department of Labor. They work in, in conjunction. And as we look at these different plans and the different options to the plans and the different benefits and characteristics of the plans, they get more and more difficult. And as we'll see as we go through the procession here at the different types, the more complicated they become, there are some advantages. However, um, it comes with some certain costs. And I'll try to address those as we go along. So what I thought I would do is start at the very, very beginning um, as far as uh, complexity is concerned. And the first item here is I wanna show uh, a plan that is very convenient, very cost effective. And it's simply called a payroll deduct IRA plan. So the term IRA, if you're not familiar, that stands for individual retirement account. So we as individuals, we can do these on our own outside of work anytime we want. You can do it at the bank, you can do it with an advisor, you can do it yourself on Fidelity or Vanguard. Um, so you can create an individual retirement account and you can contribute to that IRA if you have earned income in any given year. Okay, it can't be unearned income. You can't take your social, if you're strictly on social security, you cannot take money from your social security payment and put it in there because that's considered unearned income. Or if you have investments that pay you X amount of dollars per year, that is also an unearned income and not eligible to be contributed to an IRA. So if you have earned income, you're working for somebody, you can put money into the IRA. Now what this payroll deduct plan is all about is you can actually set this up for your employees if you have a business. It's very cost effective and it's all done through payroll deductions. And it's a simple way for helping your employees save for retirement, okay? So you can establish a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Uh, the traditional IRA may help the saver, your employee, get a tax write-off on April 15th if they qualify. The Roth IRA will not, okay? And the difference between the two, well, they both grow tax deferred over time as money is being deducted from their paycheck and you're assisting them to take that deduction and put it into their account. As it goes into their account and as the account grows over time, both the traditional and the Roth IRA will grow tax deferred. So that's a great benefit to people, to your employees. And what that simply means is if, I'm just using an example, if your um, uh, mutual fund had $100 and it grew to $200, uh, and you have a $100 capital gain, you don't pay any taxes on that. It's tax deferred. On the traditional IRA, when people take that money out someday, um, they will be taxed on it at that point. On the Roth IRA, they'll never be taxed. So there are some differences there. And if you consider doing this payroll deduct plan, uh, make sure you spend some time either with your advisor or if you want to do it on your own, make sure you take the time to educate yourself on the difference between those two, okay? So what the commitment by you, the employer would be is you would set up a plan uh, where you're deducting X amount of dollars from your interested employees who want to have this and you would deduct I'm just gonna pick a number, maybe $10 per pay period or maybe $25 a pay period. And then you will help your employee by sending that money into the company that has the IRA on behalf of your employee, okay? So it sounds a little complicated if you've got 20 employees, I don't want you to think that you're sending it 20 different checks to 20 different companies because everybody wants something different. You as the employee or the plan sponsor, the sponsor, you're sponsoring this program, you would choose a company, and it's typically a mutual fund company, where you would work with that company and everybody would have their IRA established with that particular mutual fund. So you as the employer, or maybe your payroll person, would be deducting the monies on a, on a per pay period basis and then sending money to that mutual fund company on behalf of your employees. So it's really, really a nice service um, it doesn't cost you, the employer, any uh, administrative fees. They are typically covered by the participant, by the employee. 
you might they might see an annual maintenance fee of ten dollars a year. If it's a commissionable company where you get an advisor, they will pay the commissions. It's deducted from their savings as they go along. But to you, the employer, your only commitment is a, really a matter of time from your, your payroll person who is administrating this plan. Now that payroll person might be you. So it would be something like you would do every week with your payroll and it would just be one more step. And typically once it's up and running, these mutual fund companies make your life super easy. It's all done online. It's uh, really easy. So you can kind of set it up and then it's just one more, two more clicks every single week as you do payroll, every single payroll processing, I should say. So this is a really great introduction to retirement savings by you, the employer. Just a couple quick items here. Uh, the accumulation limits or the savings limits, uh, people can only save up to $6,000 a year in their IRA if they're under the age of 50. And they can do an additional $1,000 if they'd like if they are over the age of 50. And that's called a catch-up provision, okay? Now the trick is here, and, and this will be up to your employees, these dollar amounts, 6,000 and 7,000, um, that's per person per year. And what I mean by that is if your employees happen to have an IRA, you can have multiple IRAs, and if they have an IRA outside of work, that they've been contributing to, or maybe they have an automatic investment from their checking account on their own, uh, you cannot exceed $6,000 or $7,000, you know, based on your age. So that's something important that your participant would have to remember, okay? And if you're working with an advisor, this is one of the things the advisor would stress with the participants. Let's make sure we don't over-contribute. Over the IRS doesn't like if you save too much money for retirement, and it's problematic to clean it up um, so that's one thing that I do with my clients to make sure we're not overdoing it. Let's see. A nice thing to you, the employer, would be the fact that uh, in this particular retirement plan, you are sponsoring it. So you've taken care of the mechanics to help your participants save this money. However, there's no matching dollars coming from you. Okay, so there's really no cost to you as an employer whatsoever, other than your time on the processing. Okay, so that's the first, as far as a number of different plans that are available to you as an employer. Now you might find you have the needs to do more, okay? Another type of plan is something called the Simplified Employee Pension Plan, or SEP for short. So if you haven't heard this term, you may. So it's a SEP IRA. Now these are ideal for people that are sole employee employers, okay? So I, I usually see these a lot for somebody that has a, um, their own business. Um, a great example would be somebody that's uh, maybe a real estate agent. And um, so they are a 1099 employee, all right? So they work for a bigger bro uh, real estate brokerage firm, but they are independent. They're in independent contractors. So this would be a perfect example for somebody to do uh, a SEP. Uh, if you were a sole practitioner attorney, for example, this would be another excellent example of a tool that you can use. And the reason being is that SEP IRAs, Simplified Employee Pensions, uh, Employer Pensions, excuse me, um, the only money that goes into a SEP IRA is employer-sponsored money. So if you are a sole practitioner, Okay, and you're in business for yourself, you kind of serve both purposes. You are a, uh, an employee to the business, but you're also the business itself. So this is where this is great. So you don't have any additional employees and you may contribute up to 25% of your income per year into this type of retirement account. So our first option was the uh, payroll deduct IRA plan where you could only save six or $7,000 depending on your age here, we can go all the way up to $58,000. So that's a big difference. If you had another employee, okay, um, outside of your spouse, um, you would, if you put in 25% of your pay, you, the employer, would also be responsible, by, responsible for 25% of your employee's pay as well. So that's where this becomes a little less effective if you have multiple employees. 
So this works best if it's just you. As we'll see here in a minute, um, some plans have testing and filings that you have to do year after year. This particular plan does not. So that's good if this happens to fit your needs. A very little requirement with you and the government to maintain these plans. And again here, the annual cost for these things anywhere from zero to maybe $15 a year for an annual maintenance fee for the account. All right, so very, very, very cheap. If you're working with an advisor, there might be a commission involved. When you purchase the shares and you get the relationship of the advisor, um, or you could set this up at the bank, you could set up a SEP IRA at the bank and use banking tools where you have the money market, CDs, um, or regular savings accounts. You have a lot of options there too. So depending on what your needs are, these SEP IRAs are terrific. So moving right along, I'm just going to slide on down to the next one. We have something called the Simple IRA. Now, these came out, gosh, almost 20 years ago, maybe about 20 years ago, I think. And it's an acronym. Simple is an acronym for Savings Incentive Match Plan for Employers. So this is a nice tool if you have a lot of employees or more than you and your spouse. And they want to save for retirement and you want to help them save for retirement. So it's still considered an IRA. So it's still considered an individual retirement account. But now what would happen is participants uh, would contribute, uh, may contribute, I should say, up to $13,500 a year if they're under the age of 50. Okay. And this will be, this has to be pre-tax. There is no Roth provision for a simple IRA. So for example, if I'm on the payroll, on your payroll, and if I earn $100 a pay period, and I decide I want to contribute $10 per pay period to my simple IRA, um, my, my pay would be $100, the $10 would come out to go to my simple, and then I'm personally only exposed to federal and state withholding tax on $10, I mean, excuse me, $90. So we have 100, I took 10 and put it into the simple and I have 90 left. And that's what I pay my state and federal withholding taxes on. So that's my first benefit, a pre-tax contribution. It lowers my tax exposure by using this particular account. The money, just like all these other accounts will continue to grow tax deferred over time. And then um, on all of these, the idea is when I turn 59 and a half or older, Typically, in the eyes of the IRS, that's when we start to spend these down. Um, when I take the money out of my simple IRA, uh, I'll be taxed on it at that point. Now, presumably, we're not going to really touch it until we're 65 or so or full retirement age, but 59 and a half or older, and presumably, we'll be in a lower tax bracket in our later years. So even though we do pay taxes, it's at a lower rate than we have today while we're earning the money and saving the money. If we are over the age of 50, your employees can save up to 16,500. Now, for you, the employer, you'll see here, um, I'm gonna slide around, bear with me one second. We're gonna go here to this item. Um, there will be a match to the simple IRA from you, the employer. So this is an obligation to you, the employer, or the term plan sponsor. And you will match dollar for dollar on somebody's pay up to 3% of their gross earnings. So back to my math example. So suppose Mike McKenna is earning $100,000 with you, working for you this year. Um, I can contribute up to $16,500. I'm over at 50. Um, but it would behoove me, at the very least, to put in $3,000. So therefore, you, the employer, would match dollar for dollar up to 3% of my gross pay. Again, my gross pay was 100. If I put in 3%, I get a match from you, 3% as well. All right. So as you contribute to my account, that's a deductible expense to you, the employer. Uh, the money would go into my account. It grows tax deferred. Um, I cannot borrow against this particular uh, fund or this typical uh, this type of retirement account. So loans are not available. 
However, um, in-service distributions are. So what that basically means, I can pull that money out without separating from service from you, my employer. Okay, and that's kind of a nice feature to employees. They might be in a pickle um, and they need, might need to tap this money before uh, retirement and they can do that. Now it comes with all sorts of ramifications. You know, there's consequences as far as taxes and penalties if you're not old enough to do this. But the key thing is if you need it, you need it. It's available to you as an employee to take the money out before you retire. And again, that's something when that day comes for a particular uh, participant, you, the employer, would not give advice on that. You, you would suggest to the employee, talk to your advisor, talk to your accountant, just so that they know um, what the ramifications are. That's not something you want to do. Um, you're, you're doing a great thing for them by providing this retirement plan for them. Uh, you're not out there giving tax advice. That's for somebody else. Now, as far as you, the employer, what are the costs to you? Um, these retirement accounts, the simple IRA, um, each of the accounts has a $10 or $15 annual maintenance fee. Um, some people, some employers will actually pay that as a courtesy to their em employees, uh, but most employers just let it, uh, let the employees handle it. And either the employee will pay for that out of pocket or they would simply have it deducted from their account. Uh, there is no testing. You see that term testing on occasion on my uh, presentation here, there's no testing. Um, you do have some requirements to make sure your plan is uh, kosher in the eyes of the IRS and the mutual fund company, it's typically a mutual fund company that you're working with on this one. Um, they will help you, you know, with the notifications you're supposed to give to your employees or non-participating employees. They will guide you as to what you need to do throughout the year to make sure your plan is compliant year after year. So you'll get some help from that. Um, Again, another commitment from you, the sponsor or the employer, you've got to commit that 3%. And there's other levels of, of contribution limits, but typically it's 3%. And if you're seriously considering about using a simple IRA, the person that you're working with, the consultant or the advisor, they will help guide you as to what your options are. But more times than not, you should plan on 3%. So that's an expense to you. So you have to plan for that 3%. You have an obligation as an employer to make your contribution, that 3% contribution, by the time you file your income taxes for the year, okay? The employees will put their money in every single pay period, but the employer ma match is not due until you file your taxes. Now, with that said, uh, every simple plan I've ever worked with, uh, the employers will match that 3% either uh, at the same time they do the payroll deduction for the employees. Nobody tends to wait to the end of the year but it's there if you want it. Uh, another thing to think about too, if you consider a simple IRA is kind of like our payroll deduct option. That was the first one we looked at. There's some administrative work on your end. Um, you would get plenty of support from typically the mutual fund company would help you do this. It's all done online. Uh, they will work with you to set up a plan. They would give you a program so that you can do it automatically as you do your payroll. Or, I shouldn't say automatically. Um, congruent with your payroll. You do it with your payroll at the same time sort of thing. It's not automatic. It's in conjunction with your payroll. A great plan. It's a terrific, simple, simple plan to use. Um, participants understand it. Nothing tricky about it. Uh, they can't borrow against it, but once they realize they can take money out when they needed it, that seems to work pretty well for everybody. And it's portable. Uh, it does not have to, excuse me, it can go to their next employer uh, should they leave your company. They can bring it to another IRA, individual retirement account, in the form of a rollover should they leave your employment. So it's really kind of a nice, nice program, really easy. Now I'm just going to move down just a little bit uh, in complexity. So as the plans become more complex, there's, there's trade-offs, you know, you get the ability to save a lot more, there's more features to these plans, but they get a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit more expensive. So you may, a lot of people, a lot of companies will start with one of these simpler plans, you know, whether it's the payroll deduct, SEP or simple, and they might eventually graduate to a higher plan. Sometimes it's because the employer or the, the owner of the company wants to save more money than they can up here at the simple IRA level. Um, so a 401k or a 403b 
But 403Bs, I, I threw that in there. Um, it's, it's very similar to a 401k, but typically we see 403Bs at a nonprofit. Uh, 401ks for profit, typically. Um, but the neat thing about these, now you can start to see that the limits are really changing quite a bit. So you, you yourself as a business owner, or you and your employees would like to do more than what you're doing or could do up in the simple IRA, a 401k is a natural transition. So somebody under the age of, of 50 can save of their own dollars, 19,500, and somebody over the age of 50 can save up to $26,000 a year. Um, in this particular example, um, this could be traditional money. So it, I've been talking about traditional IRAs and tra uh, Roth IRAs. You can do both in this particular plan. We don't call it an IRA because now we're calling it an I, uh, 401k, but you could have a traditional 401k or a Roth 401k as a participant. So this is a little bit more flexible that way. You know, we can borrow, you can set these things up so that you can borrow against your savings. Typically, if you have a value of $5,000 or more in your account, you may borrow up to half the value of your account, up to $50,000. So theoretically, if you're at $100,000 of savings in your plan, um, you could borrow $50,000. And the nice thing about a loan, it's not a distribution and it's not a taxable event. So you're literally borrowing against your retirement savings. You pay yourself back through payroll deductions. So that's kind of a nice feature. Unlike the simple IRA, in-service distributions are typically not available. So there's a trade-off. Here we do have the loans, but you cannot take your money out. Uh, just short of a hardship where um, you, you've gotta be really in trouble either getting kicked out of your apartment on your deathbed, you know, to qualify for a hardship uh, is pretty difficult. But since we don't have the in-service distributions, we do here have that loan provision again. So that's kind of nice. Employer matching is an option here, okay? Now it, it will behoove you. So now we're getting a little bit more complicated in these plans. Uh, so I'm gonna jump down here, bear with me one second. So typically here, these plans have a lot of filing with the IRS and the Department of Labor. We answer to the Department of Labor, but the filings go to the IRS. Um, a lot of testing to make sure your plan is compliant with all these new rules that we'll be having. So what we do on a 401k plan um, is we typically hire a third party administrator. So this is a consultant that works with us uh, year after year to make sure they look at all the data, all the participation from the employees, the levels of participation, and there's all sorts of formulas involved to make sure the plan is compliant, to make sure you, the employer, aren't contributing at a fa too fast of a rate than your average employees is uh, contributing. It's gotta be fair to everybody. So having a third party administrator um, helps you do that, make sure you're, you're, you are compliant. And typically that consulting, consulting fee rather is about 2,500 to $3,000 a year, but definitely worth it if we're looking to take advantage of all these other additional options, you know, uh, features rather, you know, the higher savings, the loan provisions and so forth. Um, now, typically employers will offer some kind of matching or they might pair it with a profit sharing plan. So a profit sharing plan would be used in conjunction with your 401k plan. And this would allow you, the employer and the employees but you, the owner of the company, to save a lot more than either the nineteen five or the $26,000. Again, this is why we typically have a third-party administrator involved to help us pair these two plans. But again, the benefit is it allows us to save a lot more money than we could back up here at the simple IRA. If you are a self-employed uh, company, again, we were talking about the SEP. And um, however, you might consider a uh, individual 401k. So again, this would only be good if it's just you and possibly you and your spouse, all right? But you can get all sorts of, of, of benefits of utilizing the 401k platform. Uh, you can go up to $58,000 through a 401k platform and easily and um, it's kind of nice to have uh, a solo 401k 
or individual 401k if you if you had the needs. And again, this is where working with an advisor will kind of help guide you to one of these particular plans. So these are the bulk of, of the plans that would make most sense to you as, a, as an employer. There's um, other types of plans that are out there, but if you don't have a plan in place uh, at the moment, most typically somebody would fall right into the one of these four plans. Um, working with a professional on this, that person will consult with you and guide you uh, as to what plan might be the best fit for you and, and or your employees. Um, I find that working with, an I'm an advisor, of course, but this is not a, a sales pitch, but by working with a, 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 an advisor um, that knows how these things work and how to steer and guide you would probably be a good use of your time. Um, you know, they've been around the block a lot. Uh, the rules, it seems like every time we get a new president, uh, every four or eight years, um, the rules seem to change. So you want to have somebody there guiding you. If you go to the bank uh, and try to do this on your own uh, or use a, uh, or do it on your own with a mutual fund company, they'll, they'll have somebody to guide you as well, but you might not have the same personal contact uh, that you would with a, with a personal advisor. But that works for some people. But these plans are absolutely terrific. The ability to save for retirement in a tax deferred way is terrific. You know, the, the, the government, the federal government really does not want us as individuals to rely on uh, Social Security as our retirement plan. So they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. You know, uh, they want us to save. And so they make these plans very, very forgiving. Uh, they don't want us to save too much because it's obviously lost tax revenue that they don't have today. And they need tax revenue, right? We're spending money a lot. Uh, as, a, as a nation, and we got to pay for our expenses eventually. So they're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. And for the time being, knock on wood, they still see the value of, of people taking ownership of their own retirement. And so these tools are absolutely fantastic. So what I did below here, as we just wrap on up, um, I put down a couple of websites that are I found to be really good resources. So the first two are exactly the same. Um, the types of retirement plans from the Internal Revenue Service, this hot link will take you to this very particular website. So those two are exactly the same. I just listed here the three largest mutual fund companies um, by assets that they manage for investors. Um, and these are all excellent resources if you were to try to research this and do this on your own. Um, I know you can also, uh, there are different websites that are out there that I've, I've seen and utilized. Investopedia is excellent. Um, you can just simply Google uh, small business retirement plans and all sorts of resources pop on up. But I, I did vet all four of these uh, and all four of those are excellent as well. And then of course, if you ever have any questions and you want some guidance uh, or need me to point you in the right direction, I'd be more than glad to, to help you out. Feel free to give me a buzz uh, at the number below, but thank you. Great, thanks, Michael McKenna, uh, DB McKenna. Uh, what a what a great forty five minutes crash course. Uh, really took us all throughout um, both what, what we can do uh, with uh, insurances, but but even more than that. And that was really what we were hoping to capture in this part two of Money Talks. If you missed Money Talks part one, that was with a great panelist of of women accountants uh, and bookkeepers. So make sure you head back on over to swbtchamber.com to check that first one out. And that was all about financing and bookkeeping and how to, how to get the money going so that you can then uh, invest with people like Michael McKenna. Uh, and so we just wanna thank uh, Michael McKenna, who's also a board member of our Chamber of Commerce, long time. And uh, we so appreciate you for hopping on uh, this lunch hour with us, Mike. Thank you very much. Absolutely. We also want to thank Cat TV and Mike Cutler for helping us produce uh, these series. Uh, we so enjoy this and we enjoy our partnership with, with Cat TV. Please stay tuned for uh, what will be coming soon. It will be another SVMC update uh, telecast that we tend to do during these times with COVID. And so uh, we will be uh, letting you know when those are, are about to happen again. We also want to 
uh, thank Heritage Family Credit Union, our sponsor for this year at our Lunch and Learns. Thank you, Mark and the team over there at Heritage. Uh, and then finally, uh, up, up in April, uh, we'll be doing another Lunch and Learn just like this. So make sure you head on over to the Chamber's website, sign up so you can attend, but you can also view them on Facebook as well. And the next one up is called Employee Roulette, how to find employees and strengthen your workforce. And that's gonna be April 28th. So hopefully uh, you will, uh, if you've enjoyed this series so far this year, uh, you will join us on April 28th. And with that, we hope everybody had a great knowledgeable lunch and you all get back to work. And thank you on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Hi, this is Mark Grossarth from Heritage Family Credit Union. Heritage Family Credit Union is a proud sponsor of Bennington Chamber of Commerce Lunch and Learn Series. I hope you find these uh, seminars insightful and educational.